Hello, I'm Peter Joseph, and welcome to the Why I Advocate campaign. You can learn more about this at the zeitgeistmovement.com, where we're basically trying to get people from around the world to discuss why, in a very concise manner, they advocate the Zeitgeist Movement, the Venus Project, and of course, a resource-based economy. So for me, to make this concise, which is very difficult for me at times, I'll give three basic overlaying points. The first, I think, is best summarized by St. Timothy, and that is, for the love of money is the root of all evil. And I think, uh, historically speaking, you'll find that to be the case. Even in many things that tend to be aberrated for the sake of aberrated, seemingly unrelated to finance, you'll tend to find underneath the surface there's something causal occurring within the system itself. For example, there's a great deal of violence occurring in the United States. One of the most unique things that's been uh, discovered recently by social scientists is that the degree of inequality in the current society, in, excuse me, in, in a society, uh, is directly proportional to the rates of violence across the whole spectrum of violent behavior. So it's economic attributes that can relate to seemingly aberrated acts of violence, even random shootings and things of such. So these are important factors to take into account, and there's a lot of evidence uh, regarding this, this information. The stress of this society is underlying, based economically, and it leads to all sorts of social distortions and neuroses, addictions, and problematic behaviors, not to mention physical illnesses and everything else. So the love of money is the root of all evil on multiple levels. Second point I would like to make is that, well, very simply, money isn't needed. Money's not necessary anymore. The values that we have permeating in this culture are distorted, and they generate more sickness than anything uh, positive, more sickness than progress. Uh, people function essentially in two different capacities in the modern world. They're either parasites or they're prostitutes. Sorry to be blunt about it, but that is the firm reality across the entire spectrum, regardless of how you look at it. There's a subservience attribute to what this system demands, and it always blows my mind when people think that there's something free about the world that we live in. Freedom is not even a nuance of the system that we currently live in. It's not based on freedom whatsoever. If it was, it would be completely different, in fact, much closer to a resource-based economy. But that's an aside. So, money is not needed. Not only do the values need to be changed, where people don't have the acquisitive materialistic values, they don't have to be brainwashed into constant conspicuous consumption to keep GDP up, to keep employment up, and everything else that keeps this, this machine going. Uh, those can be resolved in a new system, and new values can be created, as they always have been throughout time. A second part to that, which I think is important to bring up, is that the efficiency that we're capable of doing, we're capable of having, the ability to create uh, access abundance, the ability to take care of the basic needs of all the world's people, the ability to elevate our technology to levels that we probably can't even imagine, is intrinsically stifled by this very system because of the cost efficiency mechanisms and all of the profit attributes that make it virtually impossible for the best of anything to be created. We could raise society to the state of present day knowledge which, if you analyze today, we're probably about a hundred years behind, to be perfectly frank. Maybe a little extreme on that note, maybe more to the effect of 60 years behind, but I think somewhere between 60 and 100 years behind is where we exist today. Uh, if we wanted to uh, take modern knowledge and apply it towards renewable energies, production, and anything that uh, we think is socially viable, uh, you would see a cataclysmic change if that knowledge was simply applied and not hindered by the profit mechanism and the things that are required to make anything come to fruition in this culture. Uh, we, if you can't make money off something, it's not going to happen. And uh, the world you see around you is the result of that. Third point, to cut off my possible long-winded tangents, the third point was very simple, the effect that the system's run its course, the entropy has kicked in, not, that's stated incorrectly. The system is breaking down, excuse me, and there's nothing that's going to stop that breakdown if the mechanisms of the monetary system are adhered to. It's only if the mechanisms are bypassed and, say, gigantic amounts of debt relief is, uh, is assumed or things of that nature or, uh, you know, Manhattan projects, if you will, for, say, renewable energies. Uh, those are the only things that are going to tr slow the decline of the current system, which has been breaking down for at least 70 years now. We don't see it because we live it. We're, we're in the box, remember. 
So as this system continues to fail, as the wars increase, as the social stresses increase, as the divisions of society increases, you're going to see a lot of social instability. And it's about time people realize that there's no solution anymore within the current order. We're going to have to do something different. We have to change our way of thinking if uh, we expect to resolve this and to create a stable society, a steady state society that can actually take care of the seven to eight billion people that are on this planet, are going to be on this planet. So I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, loose distinctions, but I hope everyone else, everyone will go to the zeitgeistmovement.com and look into those points. And thank you for your time, and I hope to see a flood of such testimonials from all of you uh, in the near future. Thank you.